One decision I made early in my ministry that I would do again is that I decided that I would block out 20 hours every week just for study of the Word of God and for sermon preparation. I don't think any exciting fad or trend or creative visual can replace that. The Bible says the Word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Have confidence in the Word of God to do its work. Shortly before I retired, I met a sharp-looking 25-year-old guy in our church, Charles Jarbo. I said, Charles, how'd you become a Christian? He said, well, I didn't grow up a Christian. I grew up in high school leading a really hedonistic lifestyle. He said, in fact, on spring break, my senior year, my best friend and I came to Panama City, Florida. And he said, Bob, everything you see kids doing on MTV on spring break, that's what I did. I did everything. But all week long, we kept seeing this tent and a sign that read, Campus Crusade Free Breakfast, Campus Crusade Free Breakfast. We didn't know what that was, but he said, by Friday, we were broke and we were stoned and we said, let's stop at that Campus Crusade tent and see if they'll feed us. They fed us a nice breakfast, but a Campus Crusade worker came and sat across from us, began to talk about the Bible and Jesus and his testimony. We tried to brush him off, but I could not get what he said off my mind. Next day, I flew home. Saturday night, I'm sitting in my mother's living room, and I'm feeling so guilty over everything I've just done. I don't know anything about the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, but I feel awful. So I called my friend, and I said, I'm going to pick you up in the morning. Let's go to church. He said, what are you talking about? No, he said, I want to take you to church. He said, Bob, we never went to church growing up, except once in a while on Christmas Eve, my mother would take us to Southeast Christian Church, so that's where I came. My friend and I sat in the back, you got up to preach, and the very first words out of your mouth were, you won't believe who's in church today, he's the biggest drinker and boozer you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> said my friend nudged me, he said, how'd you know you were here? <laughs> he said, you were talking about that sinful woman in the Bible who had repented and been totally forgiven by Christ, and she was so grateful she anointed his feet with her tears. And you said, sometimes the most unlikely people come to Christ. He said, when you were talking, all of a sudden it's like there's nobody else in the room. And tears were filling my eyes. I, I, I didn't know what was happening, but I came back the next week. Same thing happened. So when the invitation to him was given, I, I walked forward and gave my life to Christ. And he said, when I was baptized, tears just flooded my eyes. He said, but I knew what it was then. I was like that sinful woman. I was forgiven. I was cleansed. I was whole. I was new in Jesus Christ. And I wish you could see him today. He uh, married a beautiful girl, has two great kids, are active in a small group. But I've often thought, you know, there's a campus crusade worker over here in Panama City, Florida, that has no idea that the seed of the Word of God that he planted reaps such a harvest. And I'd say to those of you just beginning ministry, have confidence in the Word of God. Sometimes you'll not see the results, but be confident God's Word will not return.